Welcome back to another episode. Today we're adding to an existing system. This was done recently by Eon. They've added seven panels to the front of the roof. Customer contacted us and he wanted to add some to the north facing roof. It's a solar edge system, so we can add to it. And we're doing a few little different things along the way. Come take a look and I'll show you what's interesting about this job. So as we've explained in the past, a solar edge system uses optimizers under each panel. The issue with this installation is they've not used enough. So there's seven panels on the roof and these S440 optimizers need a minimum of eight. Unfortunately, there's only seven. So it's been underperforming and not working. Solar Edge have locked it out to stop it from damaging the inverter and the optimizers that are there. When we add the new panels, we're gonna tie the optimizers into these seven, balance out the strings, and then that'll get the inverter working. We're also upgrading the inverter from a three kilowatt inverter to a six kilowatt home hub inverter which will be capable of going off grid and taking the whole house off grid and utilizing the solar edge battery that we're putting in. So come and take a look. I'll introduce you to the team and show you what's going on. Matt is on with mounting a board and the inverter so that when we go into the loft, we can just swap it over. Do you want to talk through what we've got? Here we've got essentially, you know, almost like a builder's board, so, uh, like a home location where we can have all of our wiring centers together, we make all of our terminations in one point, which is good for servicing reasons. You know, we can all just go to one localized central location for um, any testing or faults we have. So yeah, here we've got the inverter. We've got a little bit of trunking to house all of our cables. Um, we've got some rotary isolation switches. Okay, so we can isolate our systems. Um, got our meter in the middle. And yeah, some wiring centers here for all of our data switches so that we um, so it can all talk to itself basically, yeah. And we'll wire all this up at the bottom so we're ready to go. So ease of access, we can get into the, uh, into the loft where it's gonna be located and then we can um, make our final terminations in there. So this makes life a lot easier doing it down here. So this inverter is a solar edge. It's still a HD wave, but it's a solar edge home hub inverter opposed to the solar edge home wave inverter. Why they didn't think of a different name altogether, I don't know. But the home hub inverter, what this means is once the gateway is launched later on this year, maybe early next year, this will allow this installation to go off grid. Whereas the HD wave on its own doesn't allow the system to go off grid. Differences on appearances, we've got this bottom section here. Um, top section is very similar to the home wave. But the home hub's got the bottom section and it's got more terminals and a dedicated terminal port for the battery opposed to using splitters. These are becoming more popular now as people want to go off grid and get ready to go off grid. And then once the gateway is available, we can come back, split the tails through it, connect it up, and yeah, and we'll go off grid. So that's the home hub inverter. Don't know why they didn't call it something completely different. <laughs> yeah. Home hub. We'll go and see what Matt's getting up to on the roof. He's installing the panels. Right, so we're on the roof with Matt. He's installing the panels today, 12 panels, like I said, on a north facing roof. Because it's got the optimizers, each panel will work to their own maximum efficiency. So it will still generate. You wouldn't particularly do this with a standard string inverter, but being solar edge, it'll still make a huge difference to the generation on site. Um, and I just want to show you this. If we take a look at the hooks, I know in the last video we did a slate installation. On this one, it's a tile, and you can see there, they've just been notched out so the tiles are sitting flush back into place. Otherwise, what would happen, these tiles would sit up and it'd all be a little bit wonky, a little bit uh, not that good. Same as the front, we've got a solar skirt going on this as well. Pretty much just a black powder coated aluminium trim and it'll stop pigeons, debris, birds, squirrels, whatever you can think of getting underneath, damaging the cable, nesting. So this will be going on afterwards as well. I'm going to leave um, Matt to do some work and I'm going to get on with cabling up the battery. Right, so the interesting thing about this job is it's already got an AC coupled battery system on it. So when Eon installed this, they've put a three kilowatt inverter in the loft, which is solar edge, and matched it with a give energy AC coupled system. So what that means is once the DC power has been converted to AC, it comes down all this cable into the fuse board. If this new device here senses export power going out, it'll grab that power and charge it into these batteries. The customer wanted to add to batteries, 
And the simplest and easiest way to do that would be by adding a DC coupled solar edge battery. So now we have a DC coupled solar edge battery and two give energy AC coupled batteries. So there's a lot of storage on this site. Because it's got two inverters and we're increasing the inverter in the loft, we've had to reapply for a G99 and get permission from, um, I think it's Scotch Power in this area. They've approved it, but they've given us a export limitation. So it just means we've got to be able to limit what we can send back to the grid at once. So actually this is quite a big system for this job. Quite a lot of storage power. Who's coming into the isolator anyway? Meter, left hand side of the meter. You need them cables, don't you? So we're just making up the cables to get from the panels to the inverter. Because the original inverter was only a three kilowatt inverter, the circuit size wasn't actually big enough to cope with the new inverter. So we're trying to tie onto the existing circuit and pull up a new six mil cable. Fingers crossed it's going all right. Is that enough? So on the last install we videoed, we had Dan from DMH Electrical, think it is. Yeah, DMH. We had Dan giving us a lift. Um, it's just nice to work with different people. This time we've got Matty. And Matty and I, or, or shall I say Matty, is one of my skydiving instructors, <laughs> of all things. He's actually a qualified electrician as well. He's not just <laughs> a skydiving instructor, but yeah. We've done two jumps together now, Matty, or one? I think we've done two jumps together. Um, and we've done some time in the tunnel as well. So, yeah, we've done a bit of indoor skydiving. Um, Matty actually taught me my left and right turns in the sky during free fall. And actually, you were, you were the first instructor that completely let go of me uh, in free fall. So, yeah, and we had, we had, I think we had a bit of a long day. Um, and then we just got chatting, and it turns out he's an electrician and I live down the road. So, I'm going to teach him how to do solar and hopefully he'll teach me how to skydive better. <laughs> So this is the part now where, from what Matty built earlier, all of the po components come together. Um, we've had to joint out the front seven panels in here, so that'll get labelled up. And that's been added to some of the panels on the rear roof. And it should all make sense soon. Isn't it RS-485-1? Yeah. yeah, so that will come off. It should say R B A B G. Oh, here you go, it's on here. It's on the back here, so G A B. Yeah. A is going to be brown, yeah. B is going to be brown and white, and G is going to be green. Always losing bits and such. Places. Yeah. And you're already in a stress position. <laughs> yeah. So there's the one. Do you know which one it is out of them two? We're very almost done for the day. The inverter's connected, the battery's connected. It's all paired. Final bit is to connect it to the internet for the monitoring. And in this scenario, the customer's got a patch panel. So we'll be using the ethernet and hardwiring a 
data cable to the inverter. So as long as this data cable works, we'll be ready to go. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Happy days. That can go in that map. That can go in that now. So we're all finished. We've put the 12 panels on the rear of the property, which is a north facing roof. And that's at the customer's request. And we've tied them into the existing seven panels. We've also made sure that those seven panels, which weren't correctly designed, are now correctly designed with the installation. We've added the home hub inverter, export limitation, G99, and a 10 kilowatt battery. And that's us all done. And just before Tom's battery dies, we're going home.